What up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Chica Chica Free. But uh, today, what we're going to do is uh, going to continue our little foray into influence lines and structural analysis and specifically talk about the Mueller Breast Law principle. And which is, and, and we'll focus our discussion today on statically determinate structures. And what we'll hope to do in this video is just help explain how to construct influence lines using Mueller Breast Law principle. And this is, this might be one of the concepts that even faculty have a hard time understanding, or just because you don't do it all the time and and whatever, you know, it's just it's a challenge. It's just something that you have to do. And if you're if you're using a lot of like bridge design, or if you're doing that kind of stuff with a lot of moving loads, and this might be something that you deal with on a on a daily basis but really the mueller breslau principle it, it's just you know it's like the mercedes-benz of influence line approaches if you will right it's a it's a graphical technique and uh, the influence line for any action essentially here this is the statement i got this from golly and neville uh, some old school structural analysis book right when i was a grad student but here the influence line for any action reaction uh, the action can be a reaction, internal shear, or internal moment, whatever, right? In a structure is equal to the deflection curve when we remove the action and replace it with a corresponding unit displacement or rotation. It's like, what? What does that mean, right? But here, what it means is, what they discovered, and, and I'll, maybe I'll show you a little proof in a second, is that if I want to find the influence line, let's say, for this simply supported beam, and specifically, I want to find the influence line for the reaction at A, the vertical reaction, AY here, so I want to find the influence line, influence line for AY, okay? So the first thing you got to do is be able to identify what you need, right? So where, where is this thing? Identify uh, the, the quantity or the action that you need and the location. And really the, the hard part about this is, is trying to figure out what you need to remove. And then two, if you can identify the action, then you have to redraw the structure redraw the structure redraw structure without the capacity without the capacity for that action and what does that mean that me just means you know we have to redraw this removing a y for that action okay so a lot of words here but here so if i want to so essentially i found i want to find a y i got to remove it so in, and i want to redraw the structure with without any resistance in this at, at location a in the vertical direction so let me see here what that would turn this thing into is i need to be able to resist motion or i have a force this ax has to remain but i have to be able to move up and down now so this thing would look like a, like a, a roller here there'd be a giant roller and the beam would be attached to this roller like this okay like this right here and here's another roller right here and and this thing essentially this is like a bunch of walls right here and and this thing at point a is able to move up and down and here i still retain a reaction in the x and by right here okay i still have that it's just now i've i've lost a y i've lost any capacity in the vertical direction at a then oops then what i want to do to find the influence line is apply a unit displacement or rotation but unit displacement at the location where i have removed the 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 capacity or the action okay or the force or whatever it is okay uh let's see apply unit displacement okay at location in place of the action in place of action in place of action that's probably better okay but really you know just to basically it's identify the action, redraw the structure, and then apply that unit displacement. And then here, so I would apply a unit displacement, which means one, a displacement of one, whatever your units are. And I draw that deformed shape, that deflected shape here, which looks like this right here. This deflected shape is essentially an influence line for a unit load moving, you know, on the structure somewhere. This is this right here. This blue line, this deflected shape, is the influence line for a unit look for a y. Okay, so for a y here, this is the influence line, and and that's amazing, right? That's all it takes, and this is that influence line here. And in the way that it's proven, or the way that these guys Mueller Breslau discovered it, 
is that they use the method, the proof is in the pudding. Well, not really the pudding, but the method of virtual work. The method of virtual work. And some of you are going, oh my gosh, right? And it's cool, you know, I, I would go like that too. But right here, I wish it was as good as pudding, but it's not. But here, method of virtual work here. So what they said is, if you can imagine here, this deflected shape here. So the idea is that, you know, uh, uh, all the work done by an imaginary ex, uh, imaginary displacement, an imaginary unit displacement, is equal to zero. Okay, that's the idea, right, uh, of the of the principle of virtual work or the method of virtual work. You know, that's a whole nother video set, you know, for for us later on maybe. Okay, but here the idea would be that you know if I had this displacement and with this reaction a y here. Right here, and I have to look at all the work that my external forces acting on this. So let's say I have an external force P here as well, moving through in this displacement delta Y. Okay, so this delta Y is the displacement at under the load, uh, wherever my unit force is, or wherever my this point load is right here. And and if I look at the sum of all the work done by the external forces, uh, let's see here. I would have a Y times one, which is the unit displacement, plus, uh, let's see here, P, and this there would be a negative here. Does everyone agree with that? There'd be a negative because the force, so in this case, AY was a force going in the upward direction and the displacement was in the upward direction, so that's a positive work. Whereas here, the force is pointing downwards and there's a, and it, the displacement is upward, so that would have been a negative, then put a negative, P times delta Y here, and then plus BY, and BY experiences no displacement, so times zero, so that's ox is zero, and then plus AX times zero, which is zero two, equals zero. Okay, so all my external work, which is this left side, is equal to, uh, by virtual, you know, a virtual work or virtual whatever displacement, all my work due to a, external work due to a virtual displacement is equal to zero, and here, this just is zero, zero and and here this whole business uh a y is equal to uh, p times delta y and what that would even mean that what that means further is if p is one right here that means if this is a unit force that's applied here the value or the 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 value of a y is equal to the displacement or it's proportional right and so here when when I have the unit force right here, the value of AY is equal to that virtual displacement or that displacement that's going on right there. So that's that. That's essentially the proof. All right. So anyway, this is a, a different proof. This is a pretty simple proof, you know, that just says that the that that this this you know the the reaction at A of AY is related to that that displacement. Or the deflected shape under the point load, okay, the deflected value, and so, uh, but that's a simple proof. Whether or not you buy it, you know, what you got to do is remember that that you got to identify the action, be able to redraw that structure, and then apply the unit displacement and draw that deflected shape. That's that's probably the hard part, drawing that deflected shape. So we'll come back in the next in part two of this video, or of these videos, and and do a bunch of cases and talk about what it means to draw that deflected shape and and come up with influence lines using Mueller-Bress law.